What's up guys? We're here today with the multi-service tactical brevity code tutorial, okay? This is the uh, short-term radio calls, that kind of stuff, like the, the stuff that sounds like coded gibberish to you if you don't know what it is. Uh, we're going to be breaking down some of that stuff. Um, I have gone ahead and selected certain ones that are specific to DCS. Uh, there's obviously hundreds out there. But they're not applicable to DCS, so I didn't put those in. I didn't want to make this a three-hour video. Uh, so we're going to be discussing those. And by all means, if you watch the video and you see that there are certain ones that I missed that are important, by all means, put them in the comment section for others to see. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so the first one is Scram. Scram is, a, is an emergency directive to egress for defensive reasons or survival reasons, okay? Um, and they'll give you a direction, right? Scram like 180090. They'll give you a bearing to scram into. And what that means is just get the hell out of there in the direction I just gave you. So maybe you just flew over a zone. There was a SAM site there that wasn't supposed to be there, but it's there. So over the radio, AWACS just tells you to scram, right? So they just want you to get the hell out of there. Okay, next one is scramble. I'm sure a lot of you already knew this one. Take off as quickly as possible. Okay, next, uh, bra. This is one that a lot of you asked for. It's basically just a tactical control format that provides target bearing, range, and altitude. Okay, it's just a quick format to give you the three pieces of information that you're going to need. In some situations, it's actually B R A A. Uh, and the last A in, uh, in after altitude is aspect. So when it's BRAA, they're providing you bearing range altitude aspect. Okay. So when you get that information, that's the bearing range and altitude of the target that you're supposed to be vectored onto. Okay. Uh, break in a certain direction, break right, left, that kind of thing. This is a directive to perform an immediate maximum performance turn in the direction indicated. Okay, this assumes a defensive situation. So a lot of people think breaking right and left just means, you know, throw the plane right and just pull the stick back, right? And in reality, it's an immediate maximum performance turn. So this requires you to know the specifics of your plane and what it can do. And with the payload that you have selected, what is the maximum performance turn that the plane can currently execute, okay? And based on that information, you can break right or left. It's not as simple as just throwing the plane right and pulling the stick back. Okay. Uh, holding hands, uh, aircraft in visual in visual formation. All right, it's pretty easy. As long as you can see him, you're holding hands. Home plate. This is your home airfield. If you are operating out of Dafra Air Force Base in the Persian Gulf map. Dafra Air Force Base is your home airfield, okay, is your home plate. And mother, mother is used to describe uh, the carrier from which you took off. Uh, ray gun, a ray gun indicates a radar lock on to unknown aircraft and is a request for a buddy spike. Okay, let's, before we talk about this one, let's talk about what a buddy spike is. A buddy spike is a friendly aircraft air-to-air -air indication on radar warning receiver to be followed by a position, heading, or altitude. Okay, so let's sum this up. A ray gun. Let's say I'm flying uh, with my buddy Steve. Okay, let's say we're separated by, I don't know, 50 kilometers, and Steve finds a target and he locks it up. Okay, when he locks that target up, he calls out ray gun. He doesn't know if that's a friendly or a hostile that he locked up, so he calls out ray gun. My plane begins to light up, okay, and my plane starts to give me those indications that you have been locked up by a radar. So chances are pretty good that Steve just locked me up, okay? So what I'm going to do is call back to Steve, buddy spike. So he calls out ray gun, I call out buddy spike. And... That's not enough, though, because chances are pretty high he locked me up, but it's not 100%. So what I'm going to do is after I say buddy spike, I'm going to give him my heading and my altitude. All right, so this will help him because once he locks me up, his radar will tell him the heading and the altitude of what he just locked up. 
So when I call out my buddy Spike and I give him my heading and my altitude, he can look at his radar and say, oh yeah, those are the exact same headings and altitude. So I just locked up my buddy. Okay, so the way it would go, would he would lock it up, he would say ray gun, I would say buddy Spike, heading, I don't know, 090 at Angels 15 is my altitude. He would look at his radar. Uh, heading whatever I just said, I forgot what I said, and Angels 15, he would look at that and he would say, yeah, that's a match for what he just said, so I just locked him up. That was a friendly. Okay, so that's how the ray gun and buddy spike system work. Uh, cleared hot. Ordinance is release, uh, sorry, ordinance release is authorized. Probably knew that one. Uh, continue. Continue is a preset maneuver, does not imply clearance to engage or expend ordinance. So when it says continue a preset maneuver, um, that is you having already spoken to whoever called in. This is mostly like an airstrike situation. Whoever called in the airstrike, they obviously set it up for you. They gave you grids. They gave you uh, friendly positions, um, target elevation, all that stuff. So it's a preset maneuver. You already knew what, know what you're doing. Uh, you're set up and you're inbound. And you call it in. You say, hey, like 30 seconds before like, you know, I'm in a position to drop the bombs, and he'll say continue. Continue means keep doing what you're doing, but you're still not cleared hot to drop that ordinance. Just keep coming, you know? And then in the last, like, little bit, like the last 20, 15 seconds, maybe even a little sooner, he'll give you the cleared hot indication saying that weapons release is authorized. Uh, continue dry, ordinance release is not authorized. So maybe he called in an airstrike. Uh, he's kind of not sure if there's friendlies in that area. He's still working on it. And he tells you to continue, like keep coming, don't stop. But you're dry, which means you're going to come in without ordinance release. And in the last second, if he figures out that the friendlies are out of there and you're good, he'll give you the cleared hot indication. Feet wet or dry, uh, flying over water or land. All right, that's pretty simple. Next page is going to be Cyclops. Okay, this is any unarmed aerial vehicle. The reason it's called a Cyclops is because they have this one camera at the bottom with this big lens, looks like one eye. It's called a Cyclops. Okay, any unmanned aerial vehicle. Uh, hook right or left. This is a directive to perform an in place 180 degree turn. So if you are flying true north at zero 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 and you're given a directive to hook right, that means you will bank to the right and you will do a 180 degree turn. So when you're finished, you will be bearing zero, sorry, one eight zero because you were zero 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 when you started. Okay, so there's a directive to perform an in-place 180-degree turn in the direction that you were given. Uh, merge. This is information that friendlies and targets have arrived in the same visual arena. Um, so, you know, when you do those dogfights and the guy zooms past you and you got eyes on him, you've merged. All right? It's pretty simple. Okay, so next we will talk about the bullseye, okay? Very rough explanation of bullseye. Uh, this is an established point from which the position of an object can be referenced, all right? It is a pre-established point, probably in the mission briefing, and it is like this. So like this is a bullseye I've placed over Dubai International Airport, uh, over the city of Dubai. Using this, we can reference different positions and enemy hostiles in the area. So you can see that it's divided 360, 90, 180, 270. Okay, so how would you use this? Let's go to the next one here. Let's say somebody called in a bogey bearing 045, uh, range 60 miles at Angels 12. So that's your bullseye indicator that puts that plane right here. Okay, let's say that these red ones are worth, are each, uh, sorry, 20, 20 miles distance, let's say, uh, each one of these. So 20, 40, 60 miles at 0, 4, 5, this is technically also 0, 0, 0, or 3, 6, 0. And this is 90 in between these two points is 0, 4, 5. So that's where he would be, somewhere between these two points. And it's 60 miles, so you go 20, 40, 60 miles. At Angels 12, so his altitude is 12,000 feet. 
So using this information, knowing what this preset point was, that's obviously very important, uh, you could extrapolate a general position at which you could find this hostile target. Okay, so that's basically what bullseye is. Moving on, uh, bug out is a separation from that particular engagement, attack, or operation with no intent or direction to return or re-engage. All right, so let's say we're flying. I got my wingman. Um, he's, I don't know, bingo fuel. He has no ordnance left. He's got no bombs. There's still one more target. I got bombs. I'm going to say, hey, buddy, uh, bug out. Okay, just get the hell out of here. I'm going to drop this bomb, and then I'll just come myself. So I'm basically just telling him to get out of here. Don't come back. Bug out. Okay? Next, uh, Buster. This is a directive to fly at maximum continuous speed. So put your afterburners on and haul ass. Okay, that's Buster. Uh, furball. A furball is a turning fight involving multiple aircraft with known bandits and friendlies mixed. This is obviously a very important distinction. When you close on a furball, it's basically when they tell you it's a furball, they're basically telling you not to uh, just lock anything up and shoot it inside the furball, okay? Because there's friendlies there. So be careful who you shoot at. It's essentially what they're saying there. Next, uh, Hotel Fox. This is high frequency. And Sierra Hotel, this is shit hot. Okay, so you're flying into a situation and the guy tells you, hey, uh, be careful, this area is Sierra Hotel. Okay, so this area is shit hot. Be very careful. All right, that's what that is. Uh, mud spike indicates a radar warning receiver or RWR ground threat. All right, so a SAM site, something like that. Blue on blue fire, uh, this is friendly fire, inadvertent hostile engagement between allies, right? So somebody is shooting down a friendly. This is blue on blue fire. Uh, angels, I'm sure all of you more than likely know this one, but I put it in just in case. It is a term meaning altitude and thousands of feet. So angels uh, five is 5,000 feet, right? A uh, bandit. A bandit is an aircraft identified as enemy, okay, in accordance with theater ID criteria. So whatever area you're in, let's say you're flying over Iraq. If you find an Iraqi MiG, he is a bandit, all right? If you find a Russian plane, he is not a bandit because you're not supposed to be engaging Russian planes, let's just say. So the Iraqi is a bandit. The Russian is not, okay? A bogey is a radar or visual air contact whose identity is unknown. So it's an important distinction. A bogey can possibly be a friendly. All right, you don't know what he is. So until he's identified as a bandit, don't engage him. All right. Next, bent system indicated is inoperative. So let's say I got into a dogfight, I got hit by a missile, but I'm still flying. I'm bugging out, so I'm getting out of there, and I call it out. I say, hey, my radar is bent, all right? My radar is inoperative. I can't see anything. I'm flying blind, okay? That's what bent is. System is inoperative. Whatever system, right? It might be, I don't know, hydraulics. Hydraulics are bent, right? Doesn't necessarily apply to radar. I just use that as an example. Uh, bingo is the minimum fuel state needed for aircraft to return to base. I am bingo fuel. I'm sure you've heard that several times. Uh, bogey dope, request for target information. You heard this when the pilot asks for AWACS, uh, calls up AWACS and says, hey, uh, give me a bogey dope. All right. Uh, the AWACS will respond with something we heard about a little bit earlier, a bra. Okay. Uh, AWACS will respond with a bearing range and altitude. If you remember, we talked about bra near the beginning. So a bogey dope is, resp is uh, yeah, responded to by a bra call, okay? Request bogey dope, give them a bearing, a range, and an altitude. That's what you'll get back in return. All right, uh, naked, no radar warning receiver indications. All right, so you would say, I'm naked. Arson 2 one is naked. I got nothing on RWR, okay? On station, 
Uh, on station is an informative call that a unit or aircraft has reached the assigned station. So let's say you were supposed to fly to whatever coordinates, uh, and then you're going to report in Arson 2-1 is on station. All right, so I'm where I need to be, and I'm ready for tasking. I'm on station. All right. Uh, padlocked. This is an informative call indicating air crew cannot take eyes off of an aircraft or a surface position without risk of losing tally or visual. Okay, so if I take my eyes off this guy, we're probably not going to find him again. All right. So you would say they would call you. They would say like, "Hey, uh, I need you to go to this position. Right, fly to this grid coordinate." You would say. Uh, negative I'm padlocked on a target right so I, I would do what you're saying but if I take my my eyes off this target we're not gonna find it again okay so I'm padlocked uh, Popeye this is flying in clouds or area of reduced visibility arson 2 1 is Popeye all right so I don't have very good visibility retrograde uh, this is a directive to withdraw from present position or area of operation in response to a threat. Okay, that pretty much sums that up. It's pretty simple. Directive to withdraw. A ripple. Uh, this is specific to bombs, two or more munitions released or fired in close succession. Uh, so you would put like a, on some of the Russian planes, it's in seconds. So you would put a one second ripple between the bombs. So the release from the pylons of the aircraft is one second. So it would drop one bomb, wait one second, drop a second bomb. Uh, on the Hornet, it's displayed, the ripple is displayed in feet. So you can set it up that I want a 300 foot ripple. Okay, so the, the plane would drop the bomb in 300 feet intervals. It's called ripple. Uh, saunter is the fly at best endurance, so whatever the best endurance uh, in terms of fuel burning for your engines based on your specific plane, it's called a saunter. Uh, separate, this is to leave a specific engagement. Okay, This does leave the option to return or re-engage. Right? You're just temporarily separating for a second. A skunk. This is a radar or visual maritime surface contact whose identity is unknown. All right, so it's just like Bogey. He's a skunk. You don't actually know. He's unknown. He could be friendly. And he's maritime, so it's a ship. All right, something on the water. It's called a skunk. A bird dog. This is a directive call to maintain contact or targeting information on a maritime surface contact. All right, so they're wanting you to maintain contact or any kind of lock that you have on a ship. It's called the bird dog. Ajax, landing zone or pickup zone is clear for threats, clear of threats. Okay, so this landing zone is Ajax. Uh, anchored, directive call to orbit about a specific point. All right, so you can anchor above... Uh, a target area, you can anchor above the carrier group. Say you you got a holding pattern, you're anchored in at Angels 15, okay? Uh, that just means I'm orbiting at Angels 15, waiting for the call to come down. A spike is an RWR indication. A splash, target hit with expended munitions. Tally, uh, sighting of a target, banded bogey, or enemy position, right? You've probably heard this one 100 times. Tally one, tally two, right? I got two, I got one. It's just indicating a visual. Uh, commit or committed. This is a fighter intent to engage or intercept. Controller continues to provide information. So uh, this is a fighter. Actually, hold on. Before we talk about this one, let's do Tiger. Uh, enough fuel and ordnance to accept a commit. Okay? So... Uh, a fighter is intending to engage or intercept, but that fighter, in order to commit, requires enough fuel and ordnance to accept that commit. Okay, so you would say, like, Arson 2 1 is Tiger and committed. Okay, it means that I have enough fuel and ordnance to accept that commitment, and I commit to the target to engage or intercept that airplane, that jet, or that ground target, whatever. Okay. You're just indicating that you have the weapons required and the fuel to go after that target. So at that point, your arson 2-1 is committed. 
Okay. Uh, trashed. This is an informative call that a missile has been defeated. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, clean. This has various definitions. Uh, no radar contacts uh, on aircraft of interest, so I can't find the airplanes that we're searching for. My radar is clean. Okay. No visible ba battle damage. Uh, you arrive in an area that, you know, is maybe a war zone, and it's a little strange that there's no battle damage. So you report that as the AO or area of operations is battle is clean. Okay, which means it has no visible battle damage. And the third definition is aircraft is not carrying any external stores. So you look at the the wings. There's nothing on the wings. That aircraft is clean. Right, so there was a situation uh, in Russia where a Russian plane buzzed an American uh, ship. It came down really low and just flew over the deck. Uh, it came in with wings clean, and the reason it did that is so that the plane could see the plane. Not sorry, not the plane. The ship could see that the plane's wings were clean, and therefore it didn't pose a threat. They didn't want to cause you know an accidental engagement, so they just came in with wings clean. They just buzzed the ship to say that hey guys, we know you're here, right? So that would be a situation. So when that uh, ship called it back, they said, uh, hey, we just got buzzed by a Russian plane, but the wings were clean. So they're also indicating that, like, it's not a threat, right? He's just trying to be annoying or whatever. Okay, so that's what wings clean means. SEAD. Uh, SEAD is a suppression of enemy air defenses. Pretty simple. Uh, blank. Uh, a suppression of enemy air defenses aircraft does not detect any emitters of interest. So a SEAD plane is looking for radiation emissions. And then it will fire an anti-radiation missile that will track to that uh, point where the radiation is coming from, which theoretically is a SAM site. Okay? Uh, if this SEAD aircraft does not uh, detect any emitters of interest, so it's got no radar emitters, it is going to report that it is blank. Okay. Vampire. A vampire is a hostile anti-ship missile. So somebody fired a missile at one of your ships. This is called a vampire. Weeds indicates that fixed wing aircraft are operating below 2,000 feet above ground level. So when you hear it, we're in the weeds, right? Arson 2-1 is in the weeds. That means that I'm flying below 2,000 feet. Right. What luck is a request for results of mission or tasks. Uh, also, it's called a BDA or a battle damage assessment. Uh, so you would come in for a bomb run. You would, you know, you'd have ground targets there and uh, friendlies that hopefully have eyes on that target who would have called in the airstrike. You come in for an airstrike. You drop your bombs. As you fly off, you request uh, a BDA or you say what luck. Okay, and they will tell you. Most I like to use the BDA. I like to say uh, arson two one requesting BDA or battle damage assessment, and they would say they would give you a score out of one hundred. Okay, so let's say your target was two tanks. Uh, let's say you dropped your bombs and you got both the tanks. You destroyed both tanks. They would say uh, BDA is one hundred over one hundred. So you got both of them. Let's say you only destroyed one tank and the other one is totally fine. Uh, your BDA is 50 over 100. All right. So that's what luck and BDA battle damage assessment. Uh, Wilco will comply, right? Pretty simple. Uh, Winchester. This one's interesting. Uh, it's a no ordinance remaining or can be used to refer to specific types of ordinance or all ordinance. So this one's a little um, subjective, I guess you could say. Um, I think it it refers to a specific target and if you have the ordinance to go after that target all right so if you have uh, ground targets that you're trying to bomb you're out of bombs you still have missiles though for planes and you know they try to task you on to destroying another target on the ground you would say that you're Winchester all right that means that I don't have any more ordinance for that target for that specific target all right um, I still have missiles. I'm not out of, you know, missiles, but I, I don't have any more bombs, so I can't go after that target. I'm Winchester. Alternatively, if you're facing a, if you're, you know, going up against the enemy bandit and you fired all your missiles, but you still have bombs, you are once again Winchester.
Okay, so that brings us to the ordinance codes. All right, so in this one, we got Fox 1, Fox 2, Fox 3. Uh, if you have any kind of confusion regarding these Fox codes, um, just go to the video I made before. I will link it in the description and at the end of this video. Uh, it'll talk about, it's the missile education video, and it'll talk in depth about these Fox codes if you're confused at all. All right, so Fox 1 indicates launch of a semi-active radar. Fox 2, IR homing. Fox 3, uh, active radar missile. Okay, so once again, if you're confused, go watch that video. I don't want to get too in-depth into this for people that have watched that video. Okay, next uh, we got Pitbull. This is an informative call that an active radar guided missile such as the AIM-120 or the Phoenix AIM-54 is at active range and is no longer requiring radar input from the launch aircraft. Okay, so this is what happens when missiles go Pitbull. They go a certain distance and then they switch onto their own active radar and they will grab their own target. They will go hit that they will go hit the target that they were programmed to hit. Alright, that's called going pitbull. No longer requiring information from the launch aircraft. Next is Magnum. Magnum is what you would call out uh, if you launched an anti-radiation missile. Okay, such as a harm or an AGM-122 sidearm. Uh, you would see the sidearm on the Harrier, if any of you have that module, it has the AGM-122. Uh, these are anti-radiation missiles, so they find radiation emitting from a SAM site, and they go to the source, and they hit it. Okay, This is called Magnum. So if you fire one of these, instead of Fox 1, Fox 2, Fox 3, you say Magnum. Uh, Bruiser. Bruiser is a friendly air-launched anti-ship missile. Okay, for example, the Harpoon or the French Exocet missile. I believe I said that correctly, but don't quote me on that. So a Bruiser is an anti-ship missile. A Pickle. Pickle is the re uh, release of unguided bomb or bombs. All right, so the MK-83, 84, and 82 variants. These are called Pickles. A Paveway. Paveway is the release of a laser-guided bomb, okay, such as the GBU series, GBU 16s, all that stuff. Uh, those are laser-guided bombs. You would indicate Paveway, firing one of those. A Greyhound. Greyhound is a friendly ground attack cruise missile called the Greyhound. <clears throat> uh, Arizona. Arizona is an indication that you no longer have any more anti-radiation missiles. Okay, no more ordnance remaining. Um, remember, anti-radiation was the harm or the AGM-122 sidearm. So if you don't have any more of those, you call out Arizona. Next, rifle. Uh, this is the firing of a air-to-ground missile. So a Maverick would be a rifle. Okay, it is not an anti-radiation. It's using onboard guidance to hit its target. This is called rifle. Mad Dog. This is an interesting one. This is the launch of a friendly active radar homing missile, such as the AIM-120, without radar guidance. This is very important. Without radar guidance from the launch aircraft, the missile will rely on its own radar to find a target and will generally track the first target it sees. Okay, so an example of this would be, let's say I was flying the F-15, I switch to my AIM-120, I click Alt-W for launch authorization override, and I just fire the missile without any lock on anything. The missile, once it has been fired, will just automatically pick up the first target it sees. It doesn't care if it's friendly or hostile. That's why it's called a mad dog. All right, if somebody calls out mad dog, stay the hell away from this guy. Okay, stay out of his way because that missile will track you. It does not care if you're friendly or hostile. So if you've launched an AIM-120 like that, you call out Mad Dog. You don't call out Fox 3, Mad Dog. All right. Duck. Duck is a tactical air launch decoy. Okay, uh, what is a TALD, I believe is how it's pronounced, or a TALD? Uh, the TALDs were used in great success during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. More than 100 were launched on the opening night of the war. Uh, this prompted the Iraqi air defenses to activate many of its radars. 
most of which were then destroyed by anti-radiation missiles. So you would fire one of these, the radars would turn on thinking that it's like a cruise missile or something, try to shoot it down, and then you would fire the harm missiles or the sidearms, and these would track the radiation sources of the radars of the SAM sites, and they would destroy them. So it's essentially a decoy. And I believe that we will be getting it on the Hornet uh, with some of the later releases coming up. I believe they, they said they were going to add one of these uh, decoys onto the capabilities of the Hornet. Okay, so it's called a duck. So dropping one of these, Fox 1, Fox 2, Fox 3, you would say duck. All right, and that brings us to the end of our multi-service tactical brevity codes. All right, so... That was the general stuff you would need for DCS. Uh, if, like I said in the beginning, if there's anything I forgot, by all means put it in the comment section for others to see. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. See you next time.